Hi, so I'm just looking at the Ask an Expert um, section um, and one of the top liked questions from Simon Hennessy who said, I thought it would be fun to build a Raspberry Pi cluster and he gives a link to the um, uh, to the EPC article. And we actually have been able to identify what to use it for, what free applications could be run on it and there's a similar um, comment from Harry Terracanian. So I actually, I didn't notice when this question popped up in my feed that it was actually an Ask an Expert question. So I did answer it there, but I, I gave a link there. So I thought I could just show you, um, we have this link here. And if I go there, this is a recent run we gave one of, of a standard hands-on introduction to HPC course, which runs on Archer. We've run at the Alan Turing Institute down in London. And there are some examples here, which I think you know could be relevant for, for, a, for a Raspberry Pi cluster. So I just download the source code and I'll save it to, um, I have a directory I want to save to here. Um, so I've saved that. So if I go to that directory documents, play future learn, so there's, there's the file, and um, I'm going to unpack it. It's a, it's a tar file, which is a, a Unix sort of zip file. Um, these, the, the, there is an instruction sheet which gives all the instructions for Archer, so you should be able to follow this, but I just wanted to show you what, what it does. So it unpacks. There's a whole bunch of stuff, because this is a this is um, an example used to illustrate an enormous number of different programming, programming methods and parallel <coughs> ideas, but th the most obvious one to go is to go to sharpen, uh, and, and C MPI. So there's a, a program here written in the C programming language. It's quite a standard language uh, using MPI. So if I list, there's quite a few files there. Um, maybe if I bring that up to the top, actually, make if I make this um, this font a bit bigger, that might help. So here I am. If I list, there's uh, a bunch of files there. Um, and what this, if you look at the associated documentation, you'll you'll um, and there's a talk as well. Um, what this program does is in parallel it sharpens an image. So I give you a, 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 an input image which is called fuzzy.pgm which you look at it you can see it is it is quite fuzzy it's actually a, uh, to find this I just googled <laughs> fuzzy image and found and I got the, the um, I got the uh, the say so from the from the take of the image uh, a Finnish guy um, to, to use it but he took it at a rock concert so it look it's kind of it's, it must be foggy or wet or maybe he was moving up and down so it's quite a fuzzy image and we, we apply an image processing technique to make this slightly sharper so if I just um, leave that in the background there so what we're going to do is uh, we have to un we have to compile now this um, this is set up for Archer so I have to make a couple of changes to the make file the compiler is called MPICC so if you're familiar with compiling programs you'll understand this but I have to compile it and this is just running on my laptop, but if I run it, I'm, what, what this, this says is, run this, I've created a program here called Sharpen. Um, it, it's sitting, it's an executable sitting in my directory. I want to run that on one MPI processor. If I run this, you'll see it says image sharpening code running on one processor. Um, it, it runs on my laptop. It, 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 it it's using a filter of size 70 by 17, that's explained in the notes. The main thing is, how long does it take? It takes quite a while on my laptop because it isn't very powerful. And it took 21 seconds. So if I, um, if I, it produces an output called sharpened.pgm. Um, and if I look, if you compare the two, you'll see that, that, that it is substantially cleaner, particularly maybe around this area here or in the guy's shorts. So, so this is a standard image processing algorithm um, implemented and it. it runs in parallel. But maybe more interesting is look at the timing. So if we see that took 21 seconds, let's remember that number 21. If I run on two processes, it says it's running on, on, on two processes there, but is it faster? It uh, also gives some information here about which core it's running on. Rank zero, the MPI process zero is running on is running on core zero or two. And it took um, 12 or 13 seconds. So, so it was almost twice, almost twice as fast. 21 down to 12. Let's try and run it again on three. Um, remember, there's a lot of other stuff running on my laptop here, especially with the image grabbing software and such like. But you can probably, um, took 10. So, it, But it, you can see it does 20. And, and it's got a visual output, but the, the output doesn't depend on the 
But that was reasonably uh, interesting, hopefully. Uh, the other one you could look at is, if I go back to the website, is the, uh, f I'll do the CFD example. So again, if you look, and I have a cfd.tar. Jeez, that's right, unpack that. And this is a fluid dynamics example. Again, I'll go to the CMPI version. Whoops. Um, sorry, it's sharp. Um, CFD, I need to go to CMPI. And if I compile it, I'll need to edit the make file again because it's configured for Archer. Just a few little changes. And if I compile this, Um, it takes a couple of arguments, it takes a scale which scales the prop, so here we can vary the problem size and number of iterations, so I'll run it on a problem size of 4, that turns out to be 128 by 128 grid, and I'll run it for 20,000 iterations, and, gives, and you see it's running, and it takes, how long did it take, uh, 5 and a half seconds, and it, so time for 20,000 is for five and a half seconds. And it produces an output, which we actually view with a program called GNU plot. And this is actually doing a simulation of fluid flow in a cavity. There's 128, 128 grid here. You can't really see that. But I've just print, printed out here. The arrows show the direction of the fluid flow. I'll make this a bit bigger. And the color shows the magnitude. So it, so it comes in red. It's very fast. It flows out into the into the void and then disappears down the bottom here. Not a particularly realistic simulation. There's a lot of simplifications here. But again, we're really just interested in the performance. So it took, um, where was it, five and a half seconds on, on one processor. And we run on two. You can see it's going a bit faster. And that took... Um, 3.7. So, I mean, it, it, it runs fast. Again, if I show you the output, it, it looks the same. The calculation is paralyzed and goes faster, but you get the same output. You can also um, get, do re more realistic simulations. So if I run, there's a, there's a third parameter you may have noticed, which is called the Reynolds number. Um, I'll, if I just, 2.9 is a figure. But is, is it, it'll be more obvious than I show you the output from the program, what that does. So with finite Reynolds number, in, in the, the previous example, it was very simple. We had the restriction, which we, di we didn't allow the fluid to have any rotation to produce any vortices or whirlpools, which is very unrealistic. Finite Reynolds number means that, that that is allowed. It's much more realistic. And if I look at the output here, you'll see that it's much more realistic and it took longer to compute. But we have fluid coming in on the right, down the left. But now you get these big whirlpools. You know, the, the fluid goes across. You get little vortices in the corners. It's a lot more realistic. And again, um, the picture is the same no matter how many processes you run it on um, because it, um, it it's paralyzed in the calculation. You get the same answer, but you can see the speed up. The final example is maybe a bit more interesting. It's to do with Mandelbrot set, which is a standard fractal. And why this is maybe a bit more interesting is that you see a different output depending on um, how many processes you run on. So what this does is um, the previous two examples used used the standard domain decomposition. They split the image up into into reg regular blocks, one block uh, per process. The fractal takes a slightly different approach. So, but if I if I fractal dot tar, I now need to. There's only one implementation here in C and MPI. I need to again MPI CC. Let's. Now, so my laptop is just an Ubuntu laptop. We're very similar, hopefully, to your Raspberry Pi setup. MPI run, uh, better to run it on, um, say, four processes. So this could produce the, the Mandelbrot set. Uh, if, I <coughs> if I display it, it's called output.ppm, what you see is there's a picture of the Mandelbrot set. You may be, may be um, aware of this. And what's happened is... Um, Although we had four processes, um, we had a, a, a task farm, a controller worker set up here, where one, one process of the four was a controller, and three of them were workers. And the work was divided up into these big blocks, and, and the colouring, the shading represents the, 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 um, the, the size of the task. And, and so, in fact, it turns out that um, the, the red process did almost all the work. You need to read the exercise sheet to, to, to understand how this works. But the, the colouring, the shading represents who, which process did which piece of work. And then we, we've, we've coloured the Mandelbrot set so you get this nice picture. But what you can do, for example, um, 
is you can you can vary the block size. So for example, um, minus t uh, 32 um, says uh, we still have four processes here, and that's one controller and three workers, but we're dividing the image up into much smaller blocks. That's to get better load balance, and we're sending them out. And we'll be able to see that when we run. You probably see it's actually faster to run, um, hopefully a little bit faster. But if I, the important point is if I uh, display it, you'll see that you get a much more interesting pattern where each of these little blocks represents the data that was sent to each process, and it was done in parallel. So the three processes are colored, you know, uh, brownie, medium red, and, and, and very red. And so hopefully that, again, there's documentation associated with that. So these are just completely standard programs. I'm running them on my laptop. My laptop's just an Ubuntu laptop with free um, OpenMPI and, and, and GNU compilers. So hopefully that will give you some ideas as to, as to programs you might want to run on your Raspberry cluster. So I, I hope that was useful.